One handy thing you might want to do when developing your game is to have control and manipulate all of the sprites of one particular kind at the same time. Two examples there is you might want to just blow up every enemy on the screen at the push of a button or if you get a particular power up. Or you might want to change the movement and directions of all of the enemies at the same time. We're going to have a quick look at both of those now. To get started on this, we need to add all of our snakes to a list. We'll call the list All Snakes. And we're going to add it to the list once the snake has been made. To find the list, it's actually in coding called an array. In MateCode Arcade, the category is called an array, but they also refer to the array as a list. We're going to scroll all the way down under arrays and the very last block here looks like it should belong in the sprites category but what it does it sets our sprite list to an array of sprites of kind player so we're going to edit this now the first thing we need to do is we want it to be an enemy we're making a list of our snakes we're going to then call this we'll go rename variable We'll just call it all snakes. So on the game update, it's going to add a snake. It's going to give the snake all of its properties. And then it's going to add every snake so far date list into a list of so our enemy when sprites. When the 1000 millisecond snakes. comes around, and, and then we make can now another have snake, control over that we'll list. Add that snake to the list. By looping so we've got through always up to every entry on this list. It's called loops, the category. When we loop, we do something over and over again a particular amount of times. And we can see some of these loops make it quite obvious. So for example, this one here just repeats what's inside four times. The one that we want though, if we have a look, it's down the bottom and it will say four element value of list. What that actually means is for every item that is on our list. We want to access every item on our list and we want to do it let's say every 500 milliseconds for now. So we'll bring over another game update that will trigger every 500 milliseconds. And let's put this particular four element loop in here. So the entry of the snake in our list is going to be referred to as value. So the first snake on the list, when we run this the first time, is going to be called value but we don't actually have anything called list at the moment remember if we see this little pointing down triangle it's a drop down menu and this is all of our variables at the moment and we made one called all snakes so we want to have a look at every value on the list for all snakes and then we're going to work inside this with some code to change the way that our snakes move Every 500 milliseconds or less, we'll see if the timing's right. We're just going to make our snake move a little to the left, then slither over a little to the right, and then slither back over a little to the left. Looking at our snake when we make it, it's not moving left or right at all. Let's just quickly change that. We'll start it with a 20 in the X, and now they start moving diagonally. We want to go through every snake if we on our times list. Times a number by minus one. After 500 milliseconds, well, it stays the we same want to number. We flip it but from the minus moving to the right, version. so that it's and moving to the left. A negative number by minus one. Well, then it flips back to a positive. So in mathematics, if you keep timesing a number by minus one, you're actually flipping between positive and negative. And we're going to use that to flip between moving to the right and moving to the left. Under sprites, we want to try and find where we set a sprite property. In the category, it's written as set my sprite x to. 
This is the block that we want. We're going to drag this into our loop. And then understanding that as we go through our list one by one, the snake that we're talking about at the time is referred to as value. So we're going to drag value here. And we're going to set our value property. We're going to set in particular the x velocity because that's determining our left and right movement. We want to set our x velocity to whatever it currently is times by minus 1. So math times, because we're working with multiplication, what are we timesing? We're timesing the current vx of our value, which is our current snake. Sprites, under here, we've got an oval shaped block that gives us our sprite and the particular property. Drag this into the first half of our times. And remember, we're not working with my sprite. We're working with which value on our all snakes list at the time. And we're working again with our x velocity, not our x position. Make sure that we have vx selected and we're timesing it by minus one. So every 500 milliseconds, we go, what's the current x velocity? Times it by minus one, which will just flip it between positive and negative. So we can have a look here. Our snakes are kind of slithering backwards and forwards. It seems a little obvious that it's slithering backwards and forwards. Let's play with the timing a little. What does it look like if we run this update every 200 milliseconds? It's actually looking a lot more realistic for a snake that's slowly slithering its way towards us. So here, every 200 milliseconds, we've gone through our all snakes list and we've performed an action on every single value in that list. We'll show you one other way. Let's make it, if this was a different type of game, maybe it was a space game with some spaceships, we could make it that B is like a really big bomb and it blows up all of the spaceships. We can represent that here. We're gonna push the B button and have all of our snakes disappear. Maybe they run away scared. We're going to, we can duplicate, remember, but just to remind you where it's found, loops. We want to, when we push our B button, work on every snake in our all snakes list. So four element value of list. We'll go into our B button. What list in particular are we working on? All snakes. So for the value in our all snakes list, what are we going to do? Let's go sprites, destroy. And again, remember, we're not destroying my sprite. We're not even destroying snake. We're destroying the value that is in our all snakes list. Because we're going through every single value, we're going to destroy every single snake. So having a look here at the game, they're slithering every 200 milliseconds. We're performing a task on every snake and telling it just to slither. And then when I push the B button, we're telling every snake that is in the list at the time to destroy. And again, we've got full control over that. We can just destroy it with a particular effect. Like that. We can have a sound play. Whatever we would normally do, we can put it inside this loop. And just remembering it's going to run this loop so that every element or every entry or every snake of our all snakes list gets applied. One handy tip for when we're play testing our game is to have it actually show the current physics of our sprites on the screen. And then we can have a look at what is and isn't changing. On, in the sprites category, set sprite stay on screen. We've already got one in here and we used it for auto destroy. Remembering when you see this drop down menu, there's a lot more to choose from. And one of them is show physics. So we're going to have our snake, once it's made, auto-destroy is set to on, 
show physics is set to on and have a look now what our snakes are telling us when we move around. It's actually giving us underneath every snake four numbers. It is our X position and Y position in the top line and our X velocity and our Y velocity on our bottom line. And have a look at the bottom line as the snakes are moving up. It's flicking between 20 and minus 20 every 200 milliseconds. So that shows us that our mathematics has actually worked.